Hey everyone. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about AS level content and we will be discussing shells, subshells and the concept of orbitals in atomic structure. Imagine a nucleus and the shells around the nucleus. These shells can also be known as the energy levels because it is the specific energy of these shells that holds the electrons. They are known as K, L, M and N energy levels. They have their own designated numbers which are obviously 1, 2, 3 and 4. Each energy level can hold 2 N power square electrons. Now for example K energy level can hold 2 times 1 square is equals to 2 electrons in total. The L energy level or the L shell can occupy 2 times 2 square is equals to 8 electrons. M can occupy 2 times 3 square which is 18 electrons in total while the N energy level can occupy 2 times 4 square is equals to 32 total electrons. We define these energy levels more precisely by using a set of numbers known as the quantum numbers. The first and the foremost among these is known as the principal quantum number. Principal quantum numbers help us to explain the size and the energy of these shells. They specify not only the size but also the energy of these shells and that is why we call them the energy levels. For example, when we talked about K, L, M and N shells, their principal quanta are known as 1, 2, 3 and 4. These numbers not only help us to explain the total number of electrons that can be present in them like we just calculated, it also helps us to explain and determine the radii of these shells and also the electrical potential energy of the electrons which are residing in these energy levels. Now we are going to study these energy levels or shells even further. I am highlighting them with four different colors. And we are going to talk about something which is present within the shells known as the concept of the subshells. Subshells are present within these shells. Each shell or you can call them the energy level can have multiple subshells within them. They can have one or more than one subshells within each shell. The electrons reside within these subshells. There's also another word called the orbitals that we will be talking about really shortly. Like K, L, M and N. K has only one subshell which is S. L has S and P subshells. M has S P and D subshell while N has S, P, D and F subshell. K has only one subshell, L has S and P2, M has three so you can see three circles while N has four subshells where overall the electrons are present. These subshells contains orbitals. So actually these subshells are made up of orbitals. Now what is an orbital? Orbitals are present within the subshells or you can say the subshells comprise of the orbitals. Orbitals are the regions where the probability of finding an electron is maximum because electrons are never fixed in their one position. They are constantly in a rotate and spin kind of motion. So we talk about the probability of finding an electron in a region and it is the orbital where we can find the electrons. 
each orbital has its own shape and its own size. The shape depends upon the nature of the orbital. S, P, D and F have their own shapes, while the size depends upon the energy level. If it's K, then it's going to be smaller. If it's L, it's going to be bigger. Like S orbital, which is like present in all the subshells, it has a spherical shape. So S orbital is spherical in structure. It is distributed equally along the X, Y and Z axis. So one thing is for sure that S orbitals are spherical. Whether it is the 1s orbital or it is the 2s orbital or it is the 3s orbital or it could be even the 4s orbital. They have same shape but maybe different sizes. Each s orbital can only hold two electrons. So you will see a small 2 written on top of the s. It represents two electrons are present within the s orbitals. When we talk about the p orbital, which is actually p subshell, there are three different types of p orbitals. They all have the same shape, but they have different orientation in applied electromagnetic field. In an applied electromagnetic field, there are three p orbitals. One is called px, the other is Py and the third is Pz. They are present on the X, Y and Z axis respectively. They are actually dumbbell shaped and they have two lobes. These lobes are also known as the nodes. And the areas between the nodes or the lobes is called the antinode. The electrons are mostly present in the nodes or you can call them the lobes. You can find the electrons in these regions. We also call them Px, Py, Pz orbital. And each of these can occupy only two electrons each. So for example, 2px, 2py and 2pz can hold a total of six electrons by having two electrons in each. 3px, 3py and 3pz orbitals can occupy again two electrons in each. Although the shape of d orbitals is not a part of AS syllabus, but we are still going about it. There are five different types of d orbitals. One is actually present between the x and y axis with four lobes. It is actually a butterfly shaped orbital and the lobes are present between the x and y axis. That is why we call it dxy, which means present between xy. The other is present between yz and one is present between xz. So if the lobes are present between the y and the z axis, we call it the dyz, which means orbitals between y and z. If the lobes are present between the x and z axis, we call it the d x z so these are the first of the five d orbitals d x y d y z and d x z each having their four lobes the fourth one is called d x square y square which is present on the x and y axis while the fifth one is known as d z square which is present only on the z axis. Remembering the shapes of the d orbitals, it is not necessary in the AS level chemistry, it comes in the A2. So in the coming video, we'll be talking about how these orbitals are used and how we actually write the electronic configuration. We won't be using d orbitals, but we will be talking largely about the p orbitals and the s orbitals. So stay tuned guys. Thanks.